Right, so as it's roasting hot today, I thought we're going to uh, try out a myth that you hear the old wives tales of uh, it's hot enough to fry an egg. Well, seeing as it's 40 degrees out, I'm just going to crack this egg into here, leave it out in the sun for half an hour, an hour, and see if it actually can cook. Even put some oil in there. So that's a myth exposed. There was no way that that was cooking. I've had it out for about an hour now, and all that's going to do is give me food poisoning. So any other wives tales that you know of, leave the comments in the comments section if I see if I can get around to doing them. Right, so welcome back to another episode. Uh, I apologise lately, I haven't been able to upload as much as I wanted to. Um, this was with uh, things out of my control. So this episode's really going to just be, you know, going over a few bits. Um, the cars need some general work done to them. Uh, this one needs, obviously, putting back together. Um, so I'm just grabbing out a load of bits out of the garage, out of the back of the car. I've um, got to pull the turbo back off quickly. It's only on, held on by a couple of bolts at the minute anyway. I always do that just in case I need to do more stuff. But there's, um, you can see the water pipe that goes on the VXR one, which is there. Um, I need to change that over to the uh, GSI one, which is a lot longer. You'll see it comes to about here, and that allows this water pipe to fit onto it nicely. It does fit on it at the minute, but it's not designed that way. It's kind of like a stretch fitment you can see so that's got to just pull off and the, the issue is the pipe obviously bolts to the back there i didn't have one at the time so i just temporarily put it on with a vxr one but now i've got one for the gsi just going to pull that off quickly replace that so i just quickly pulled the turbo off and you can see why you have to pull the turbo off because the oil feed that goes to the top of the turbo <clears throat> goes over the top of the pipe you can't get to the nut so you have to undo that take that off first and if anyone's interested you can see the vxr one a lot shorter it's actually quite a lot thicker as well so that's a better flow design it'd be nice if you could use these ones with a gsi someone modified a pipe maybe and allowed you to use these ones because these are far superior you can see here this is the uh, gsi one it's a lot longer but it's nowhere near as good um, it's got a tiny little hole on it compared to the flow of this one so it would be nice in the future if someone built a pipe that was a little bit longer that went to this the vxr style one so while the turbo was off, I thought I'd take the opportunity to remove these studs. These are just the universal studs. So I'm going to put some proper voxel ones in. They're slightly a little bit longer and they've got threaded hex on there as well. So the only uh, issue is to get these off, you've got to double up the nuts and it's a little bit more uh, work. So I'm replacing them for these uh, exhaust manifold studs. You can see here, these are the voxel ones. They've got the hex head on them. I wanted to show you a little tip quickly. So uh, when you fit EDS manifolds to the Z20 let engine, you can see that these are the inlet side and these are the exhaust side. Um, sometimes you just ain't got enough threads on the EDS one. So if you are fitting an EDS and you have problems with the length not being long enough, just get some exhaust manifold studs. Take your inlet ones out. You can see the left ones are inlet, right ones are exhaust. They go straight in and it's a nice little uh, trick so you don't uh, run out of threads on the bolt and uh, end up stripping it. And these bolts here, these are the official inlet manifold ones for the car. You can see that I've used them on the exhaust side. These are the ones I use. That's the part number from, you can see, stud for inlet manifold. So I know most of you know this trick, but it's really handy for people who don't, who uh, need to get studs out. You can see there's no way unless you use a stud extractor to get these studs out because, you know, you can't, you ain't got the little hex fit into uh, join onto a socket. What you do is you get two nuts on there. These are obviously M8s and I've got the flanged ones. You lock these together really nice and tight in opposite directions. And then you can just wind out the stud, which I'll show you. So you can see, look, I threaded on one already thread on the second one and then get yourself two spanners together and lock them up so in opposite directions obviously to lock them up like that nice and tight you can see they're flange nuts so they're not going to come undone and then use the back nut to just wind out the stud the nice thing is once you've cracked off that stud flange you can literally most of the time unless the uh, threads are damaged just bring them out by the hand and there you go, see, got your stud out. And so you can see here, the proper ones that I'm replacing it with, they have a Torx head. You can see what size Torx it is. It's an E8, and then you can literally just screw them in. So I'm gonna get on with doing the rest of them. And you can just do these ones up, which is nice and handy. You can see how much longer they are as well. So you can just do these ones up with a socket. Don't need any nuts or anything. So if you're gonna replace the studs, try to replace them with genuine ones. Right, so the turbo's back on for the final time finally, so we can do final assembly now. Um, didn't need to show you doing all that back again. You've seen it enough. Just waiting for the bolts to come in for the cam cover so I can get rid of these ones. They just keep going rusty, even if I get brand new ones. These were brand new, they just go rusty. So I'm gonna get some stainless ones to put in there. 
So what do people think about these clear cam belt covers for the Z20 Let? I was one of the original people to uh, put my name down for one of these um, and put a deposit down for about a year without getting anything back from it. Um, and I eventually got them through. I got about three of them and I never fitted them. Um, I, I did put them on the uh, car, on the engine, and I just didn't really like, like them that much. Um, I suppose if you had bright colored verniers, they're all right, but you know, the black ones, they don't really show up. I'm just trying to get this out of the packet. You can see like they're, 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 they're a nice design, um, but I suppose you need really nice bright verniers to, to make them look nice. I do much prefer, I think, the black ones. So yeah, if you've got a nice set of verniers in here, but the R&D ones are black and you don't hardly see them at all. I have got the original R&D inlet one, which is actually a, like anodized blue and it fits in there a lot nicer. So you can see, like it doesn't really complement the engine bay, which is why I've never fitted them. So before I put a new crank sensor in, always check your sensor. If you're putting a new one in, replace this seal, make sure it's got no splits and no damage on it. The amount of them I see that are actually missing this and wonder why they've got a really bad oil leak. Looks like a sump leak because it's just above it. And normally it sits behind the aircon bracket so you never see it. So as I showed you, these are the back seats that come out of the Fiesta. And I just pulled them out of the garage to see how nasty they are. And they are quite grimy. So I'm gonna give these a little once over just to see how nice they come up because they're actually in really good condition before they come out. Um, it's one of them episodes where you know you strip out the back you want to be light as possible but these cars have changed over the years so uh, there's light enough as it is put full interior back in it so we're going to give these a quick hoover up see they're proper grimy and see how we can get them looking so the back seat has actually come up really nice with just a little that all i've done is hoovered it over quickly and they look at from a distance that they're just this sort of color here but when you look them up close they're actually multicolored. it makes your eyes go funny you've got the the red the green in there the blue for, as you can see now it's hoovered up it actually looks pretty cool but you can see how it looked before nasty I don't know what's going on with this back seat so it was coming up nice you can see um, but then it's got this hard patch here I don't know if some chemical and that spilt on it so I'm probably going to look for a new rear bench it shouldn't be hard to find but you can see it's gone hard so this is nice and soft that's gone all hard so I don't know what's got on there so as I'm going through the garage finding different bits I forgot I had a set of the original wheels in there I also got a a pair of headlight covers as well um, proper fold ones I'm not probably I probably won't put them on but you know it's just something cool to have I think they come off the car and I just took them off can't remember at the time so I also found the original caps for these wheels so you can see so they go like that I'm not sure I actually quite like them with the caps on I took the caps off because they look pretty cool but you know that's them without the caps that's them with the caps so I think I might keep the caps on might even change them to silver. They look uh, they look like a nice, nice alloy wheel. Just gonna offer the uh, original wheel up to it just to see how that looks. So check that out, that's proper retro. I thought I'd offer up the three spoke wheel, the stock one. I think it's funny how they even put like a fake brake disc in here. That was the uh, mentality back in the 90s, you know, all about how you can see the brakes and everything, but they should have put a fake caliper on it as well. What do we think? I think it was one of the most terrible looking wheels that Ford had produced. Um, but it's coming back in fashion now, like anything, it goes around in circles. So the reason I'm asking this is I like to let you guys have some input into the builds. You're kind enough to sit there and watch the videos one after the other. And uh, I like to see what you think is cool. I know everyone's got different opinions. And you can see these side by side. Um, I've got the caps in there somewhere, but I've got to find them. I've also got the green stripes, so I haven't yet to find them, but I'm finding bits all the time, so hopefully I will. So what do you think of the three spoke wheels? I know they're retro, but while we're on the subject of these wheels, does anyone know what the original tyres were for these wheels? These are uh, Uni Royal Rally, and uh, I wondered what the original tyres were, because these look like they've been on there for absolute ever. They're obviously knackered now, but it'd just be interesting to know. So something I had to include into the video, um, my grandparents the weekend gave me this mug. Um, I see a lot of comments in the comments section. I read them all. So if I don't reply, it doesn't mean I haven't read them. Um, you can see Aaron, the man, the myth, the legend. And it really made me laugh. So I promise you I did not buy this mug for myself and it was a gift. So why I had the bonnet up on this car, I thought I'd show this engine bay how nasty and messy it is. It won't take much to clean it up. Obviously I ain't touched this engine bit at all, so it's a proper mess. Uh, anyone out there that's got a crossover, I need a Fiesta Turbo crossover. If it's polished, that'd be better. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, reverse intake pipe and this paste intercooler that's on the front. I don't want that on there anymore. I'm gonna go back to the original crossover that goes across here and probably put like a dual pass intercooler from a GRS on it. 
On the plus side, if you look inside the engine, anyone knows with a CVH, they're normally nasty and grimy in there. This engine's uh, seen no miles, so it's really clean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off this cam cover and uh, change this rubber gasket. We changed it for a cork gasket on the uh, white RS turbo from this rubber ones, because these rubber ones always leak. And we used the Victor Ryan's one with the little metal inserts and that, and they fitted on there absolutely perfectly. And there's no leaks at all now, even at high boost. So as it's a nice warm evening, I'm gonna take this car for a drive up into London where I grew up. I'm gonna get some food. Um, anyone know Brick Lane in London knows that they do the most amazing bagels down there. The whole of uh, the area is full of bagels and uh, Indians. And uh, if you haven't checked it out before, go down there, check it out. Uh, salmon and cream cheese is what I recommend and their cheesecake is amazing. It's actually made from real cheese, just like the proper recipe. So I'm gonna give this a uh, quick clean up now. There's a lot going on behind the scenes at the minute, which is not allowing me to do as many videos as I was like. That's why there's a big gap between videos at the minute. Um, hopefully I can get regular uploads soon.